look back in hindsight Everything is 2020 In hindsight we make mistakes, we're learning from this In hindsight be your today and your tomorrow In hindsight is so much clearer now Have you ever felt confined by labels or limitations, whether imposed by others or yourself? Today's guest, Dr. Nicole D. Bradford has overcome significant challenges and is here to share her journey of resilience and authenticity, culminating in her upcoming book, My Soul is Not for Sale. Welcome, Dr. Bradford. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing amazing. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to have you here. So I gave a real a slither of an introduction on you. So I'd like for you to tell us a little bit more about you and where are you calling in from this morning? I am in the great state of Texas, so you know it's Texas. sizzling outside, but I'm, <laughs> I'm here in the cool air ready to connect with you and your listeners. Okay, awesome. And just tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm originally from Austin, Texas. Mm-hmm. I was, um, I'm the youngest of six kids, mm-hmm. and I've always been someone that was just full of life. So out of all of my children, I'm out of my parents, I'm the only one that went to college. Mm. I got my bachelor's and master's degree from Grambling State University, and I received my doctoral degree from Texas Southern. So I think that that really helped to bring out my energy and help me define who I truly am. When I first began, I was uh, in high school, I was transferred to the other side of town. So I lived in East Austin and I went to McCallum High School. Mm -hmm. And once I graduated from high school, I went into this era of, I was always energetic. I was the cheerleader. I was the one that hated to see people left out. I wanted to include everyone. And so as this individual, I knew that I was someone that was like a people pleaser. I wanted to focus on everyone else because who doesn't want to fit in? Everyone wants to be a part of a group or a part of, um, People are just something that so you can say that you belong. Mm -hmm. So I found myself at a young age, always trying to fit in, always trying to make people laugh and make people smile. But at the same time, I was also kind of concerned trying to figure out who Nicole exactly was. And so I take my journey from being in public school and then in my family life because I was so different and you graduate from college, unfortunately, you have some families where they may think, oh, she thinks she's better than us Mm. because she has an education or because she lives on a certain part of town, which is not true at all. Mm -hmm. And so that started to affect some of my family dynamics. And then I moved on into my uh, being married. And Mm -hmm. of course, you know, it's kind of hard when you're going into a new family because some of the in-laws may have the expectations that you do things a certain way. You celebrate certain holidays. Kind of like, you know, have you seen the movie Meet the Fockers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I love that movie. So, and how the Uh dad says this is a circle of trust and you are outside that circle of trust. (laughs) And so- (laughs) That's how you felt, yeah. Yes, yes, wanting to be a part of that group. And so then I tried to figure out for myself, what do I need to do for Nicole so that I can be authentic, so I can be happy, and so I can be the best that I can be. And so mm-hmm. I know later on we'll talk a little bit about my professional journey, but those were just some of the pivotal points in my life where I had to determine for myself, I don't necessarily have to fit in with a group in high school. And it's yeah. okay if I'm outside of my family because a lot of your family members may not even be in your family. It's in the right. friends and the relationships that you established. And then it, when I talked about the work situation, it's just for in work, you have to be true to yourself. And most importantly, you have to hold on to that integrity. It's tough because mm-hmm. sometimes you have to stand alone, but you have to be able to stand for what you believe in. Wow. Yeah, yeah I tell you what, just in that, <laughs> I got questions. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So how long did it take you to realize um, that you had to do it for you? You well, know, this I, is this is definitely a hindsight question. And yeah. I and I'll give you one lesson that I learned as as a as a kid. I was kind of the same way. I wasn't really comedic because I was pretty shy. Okay. But as a as a young person, I remember having that joy when the people around me 
were happy. Yeah. Right. And so you, so me personally, I would mm -hmm. always be in a state of wanting to make people happy. And then at some point I realized I can't make everybody who I'm around happy. That's right. And I had to face that fact because it made me feel sad and I'm really simplifying the whole concept because I'm 50 something years old now yeah. and I can look at it. But I just remember like I had to do what needs to be done for me in a sense, right? First, mm -hmm. get that part together. And then, you know, it can maybe influence people positively, maybe some negatively, depending on what their life's journey is all about. So for you, how long you, you said that you had to look at yourself, you didn't have mm -hmm. to be in these circles all the time. How long did it take you to figure that out? Because that's a hard thing to figure out. And then mm -hmm. two, how did that make you feel? And how did you make that mental hurdle to get mm -hmm. past that? Uh -huh. I would say um, transitioning into my adulthood, into the workplace. Yeah. And I just had to feel, I, mean, I had to come to realization that there is a lot of people out there that I care about. And I was just like you. I feel mm -hmm. happy when the people around me are happy. I want you to be okay with me. I want yeah. you to buy in and like Nicole. But then when I realized not everybody's going to like you, I had to say, even for the people that I love dearly, I'm mm -hmm. going to have to focus on me. And that's going to have to be that individual's loss. And it yeah. took just one step every day for me to focus on what's best for Nicole instead of always trying to focus on what's best for someone else. Because right. the more that I continued to do that, I was losing pieces of myself. And I yeah. refuse to do that any longer. And that's in personal relationships. And that also is in the workplace. And I know that we think that in work, our jobs are everything to us. And we have to come up to the position or to the building. We have to do that code switching so we can yeah. fit in. But then mm -hmm. are you truly being uh, your authentic self? And so being okay with who I am is very important. I have three amazing children. My daughter is a teacher. My son just finished his bachelor's and my baby is at UNT. And one mm. thing I always told them is you have to think about who you are when you're by yourself. And those are the, I think that's what changed me as I transitioned to adulthood and to the workplace, because Nicole, you may make them smile and you may fit in for that moment, but their rules are going to always change. So right. next week it could be, I need you to wear this type of outfit I like, or I need mm -hmm, you to talk mm -hmm. a certain way. The, the bar is going to continue to move and you're going to be chasing it and you're going to be exhausted because you're not being okay with who you are. So it's mm. in those quiet moments that you really have to evaluate and say, you know, how do I really feel about that? Did that really yeah. serve me well? And if it yeah. didn't, then that's when you need to make the necessary changes to put you first because you can't control anyone else and how they behave. You can only focus on yourself. I always like this. <laughs> I had to go to anger management when I was huh? in the ar when I was in the army. And one of the things that they this this kind of ties in, not not a hundred percent, but one of the things that they the first lesson that you learn when you go there is that no one can make you angry. Only you can allow yourself to become angry. That's right. And I just remember that first day, that first lesson, that first hour and how I interpreted it, it was like, this is a waste of my time. This is so stupid. You know what uh -huh. I mean? But then you understand, like, you can only control you. You can control your reactions to things. Yeah. You don't have to always get upset and mad when someone cuts you off in traffic. You don't always have to get mad when someone doesn't agree with your idea. Right. Yes. Um, and that was, a, that was another lesson. I was in the army, so I was a little older at that point, but that was a good lesson to learn once I finally accepted it. Yes. Right. And I still battle with it because you have a lot of these, I specific, I can't, uh, let me stop talking for people, but I have a lot of these specific triggers to different things. Mm -hmm. And in having the knowledge that I can control how I respond is yeah. everything. Right. Because I'm not on autopilot. Sure. And, and I think it's OK for people to understand none of us yeah. are perfect. You're going to. Absolutely. Up. You're going to have those moments where you just lose it. But the mm -hmm. more you practice it, the more mm -hmm. you spend time with yourself, the better you will become. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Practice makes. Well, 
close to perfect. Clark Coast, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go maybe it's something a little personal. Okay. Um, and 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 you experienced some some domestic violence as a child. How was that? experience and you can get into it as much as you like to or, or as little as you like but how did that experience at, at, at a young age uh, influence how you look at life now well i would say for myself being the youngest of six kids and it was just my older sister before me and myself at home when mm-hmm. i would see a lot of these situations with my parents and mm-hmm. then you know of course as children sometimes we blame ourselves And I think when we blame ourselves, like I could fix this, it'll be better if I would do just X, Y, and Z. And I think we carry some of that into our relationships unless we're willing to do the work. Because when people do things or they act out or they mistreat you, it can Mm -hmm. truly affect who you are. And it has, it makes you question yourself. Like, well, why did I, why did that happen? And so as a child, it really hurt me to see these things that my mother was experiencing. Yeah. And so we would have the conversations and she, of course, was of the old school mindset that, well, all of your siblings had two parents and you need a two parent household. And that's not necessarily the case. And Mm -hmm. so it took her a hard time uh, to kind of overcome some of the domestic violence. She tried mm-hmm. to shield us as much as possible from that. But uh, that's the same message that I utilize today as a, yeah. an educator and administrator to let parents know you may try to shield your children from things that are going on, but children watch what you do and they mm-hmm. see that and it affects who they become. And so and throughout that experience for me, seeing those disagreements, seeing those fights, always being the one to go in and try to fix it and make sure everything was calm. I had to seek uh, assistance for that. I had to get yeah. counseling so that I can become stronger and I can be a better person to know I have control over what comes next for me. I yeah. have control over what type of life I decide to live. And so it's very important that we watch the behavior that we have in front of our children because it can affect them long term. Mm. Thank you. I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah. So like, how did you navigate the challenges of witnessing, witnessing domestic violence as a child and facing like i don't even know if this ties in good workplace label limitations and limitations Mm -hmm. um and i'm trying to tie it in because i'm not gonna put any words in your mouth but you know i've obviously seen fights and and i've hell i've been a part of them i told you i had to go to (laughs) Uh, <laughs> I had to go to anger management while yeah. I was in the army. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not, um, you know, taking myself out of that one. But when you experience these things as a kid mm-hmm. and now you're going to work into the workplace and there are labels and there are limitations, right. Um, based off of those labels that are on your, your black female, mm-hmm. African-American female, right. Yeah. So now you're going into the workplace and there are limitations and there are labels that apply to you. How do you navigate those type of challenges? Okay. Well, I would just say the main thing for me is, of course, after coming out of that household with Mm -hmm. the domestic violence and seeking counseling to help me to understand that that was a dynamic between my parents. It had Mm -hmm. nothing to do with me. I couldn't control it. I had to only be okay with who I am and decide what type of relationship I will have moving forward. And mm-hmm. I think when I apply that information and the knowledge that I was provided, it's not just in a, a marital or um, a male and female or what have you, a couple's relationship. It's any relationship. It's relationships in my job. And so yeah. I had to take that information that I received from counseling and apply it to me personally. If mm-hmm. I walk in a room, because for me, I've been fortunate to be a supervisor since I was like 25 or 26 years old. Okay. And you hear the late, um, you hear what people say. They, mm-hmm. I've been told, oh my goodness, I don't like her because she wears high heels. Or why are you always trying to dress up? Just yeah. simple things. Or you're so aggressive. Mm-hmm. Um, you're, you have this command presence. You just need to calm down a little bit because you make everyone uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. No, you need to own that. Because yeah. how I show up is how I show up. And I'm not going to change that for you. I will attempt to build those relationships with you. I will attempt to learn more about you and who you are. But again, I'm going to show up as the authentic Nicole Bradford that I am, and I'm not going to compromise that. And so as a young person, 
and like you talked about in my book, My Soul is Not for Sale, the mm -hmm. first chapter is being new and naive. We walk in, we're so naive and we're like, oh my goodness, I'm about to make a difference. I got this nice <laughs> office. I have all these friends. This is going to be good. And I'm going to give my ideas. I, I see the vision. I can make yeah. this happen. I'm going to make a difference. And so slowly, as you are sitting in meetings and you're providing input to conversations or you're saying things because you don't know what is it, I'm, you were in the army, you don't know the landmines or you don't know what not to talk about. You don't right. know what not, what area not to step on. And so you say those things and everybody look, oh, oh no, we're good with, this is the way we do it. This is yeah. how it's been done for years. But then you're walking into a closed community. And so you have to be okay with yourself to say, no, we need to look at this and we need to give some, uh, everyone an opportunity to provide insight because right. I felt in, on the business side and on the corporate level and in businesses in general, another chapter in my book is seen, but not heard. Okay. So many times we say that we want diversity in the building, but mm -hmm. you say you want diversity inclusiveness, but yet you're seen, but you're not heard. You yeah. check the box for me, yep. but I don't want to hear what you bring into the table. We're not mm. changing those things. We already have our goals and our programs in mind, and you're not going to come in and mess that up. So if you don't have the, the courage in yourself and the boldness, and number one, if you don't know who you are, when you get into these businesses and when you accept these positions, you can be in a position where you allow them to change who you are to fit in. But yeah. you have to decide what's important for you. And another one of my chapters that I think is so uh, good and it gets into this point, so you have to buy the book. It talks <laughs> about hush money and uh, promoted puppets. Hush money mm -hmm. and promoted puppets. What does that yeah. mean to you? To me? Yes. <laughs> promoted puppets means you know the people who who singing the song that you're trying to sing are the ones who are going to get elevated into uh more roles of of power in mm -hmm. that company right mm -hmm. it's almost like a yes man you That's know right. and, you, and you get elevated now the yes. hush money uh -huh. is uh i don't know maybe you get paid more money to shut up and, and do what we tell you to do well um, the, the way that i present it is we get that uh -huh. check on the first and the 15th Yes, ma'am. We see all the things that's going around in this building that should not take place. Mm. We hear the jokes that are offensive. Mm -hmm. it can, we see ageism. We see sexism. Mm -hmm. We see discrimination and racism. But mm -mm, I'm not going to say nothing. I need that hush money. I got to get it on the first and the 15th. Yeah, you can you say got... something if you want to, but I'm going to keep quiet because I need to get paid. So mm. we have to move beyond that hush money and then those promoted puppets are people that know what's going on, but they refuse to say something. So we'll give you this promotion if you be quiet. And so we play along wow. with the game. And yeah. until we stand united in our businesses, in our companies, mm -hmm. and even in our community, things will remain the same. Okay, so let me, let me, is the book out now? No, it's not. I'm okay, finishing okay. it at, I'm finishing okay. it now, but it will be out soon. But I'm telling you, it's got some good stuff in there. All right. I got you. I got you. I just want to make sure. Let me update my intro. Start this yeah. all over again. <laughs> so, you know, you talked about, you know, your first chapter and going into these situations, being naive. Mm -hmm. And then uh, what was it? Uh, seeing, not hurt. You know, all these different amazing chapters in, in navigating the workplace, navigating relationships, navigating, you know, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. For you personally, how did you feel when they were saying, hey, you know, wearing the high heels and coming in a little too aggressive? Did they kind of temper your spirit a little bit or were you already knowing who you were in, in, in you know, just courageous in who you were and this is how I'm going to be? Well, I'm, I'm going to be straight up with you. I always like yeah. to be honest and transparent. Of course not. When I was younger and I began to uh, serve as a supervisor, of course not. That mm -hmm. hurt me a great deal because yeah. it would make me take a look at myself personally and I'd have to take a step back. And then I would think something's wrong with me. But that's yeah. how people make you feel when you're challenging the status quo. So it took years and years of being in positions. And I will be honest with you, it's been, it took years and years of positions where I knew I didn't fit. 
So mm-hmm. I had to move along and take my talents elsewhere. But eventually, after going through those experiences, because like all of us, our experiences make us who we are today. Yeah. Those experiences made me stronger. And mm-hmm. I grew from those. So I could sit down and say, okay, Nicole, what did you do wrong? I had to take a step back. I had to reflect on myself and my part in the situation. But what did you do right? And then you can only focus on what I did right and keep it pushing because I am determined to make a a difference in the lives of others, especially when it comes to my children. I love those babies in schools and our children are going through so much and they need an advocate. And I'm not going to compromise who I am for someone because those babies don't have a voice. Right. And I tell you what, the show is called Hindsight the Podcast, right? So in hindsight, yeah. you can look at those. You can take a look in the mirror. What did I do right? What did I do wrong? Mm-hmm. And and what don't I know that I need to know exactly. going into this next step, right? Yeah. So um, just, you know, I always got to plug the word hindsight because a lot of these things you learn through through trials of fire, That's right. right? You don't know what you don't know. And when mm-hmm. you step into it, when you step on that line, mind, it's going to be an explosion. Yes. And what you do after that explosion is everything, right? Mm-hmm. Are you going to sit there and lay dead, play dead? And, and conform to all of this, you know, things that you know are wrong and going against your morals and, and your yeah. ethics and all of this, or are mm-hmm. you going to change or are you going to seek that change? Right. So I appreciate you sharing that lesson. And, you know, right now, you know who you are. Right. Yeah. But at that point back then, you didn't know who you were. You didn't know what you stood for. Mm-hmm. Um, so I appreciate that candidness as well, because most of us don't, yeah. you know, you want to fit in like it goes back to that earlier thing where I'm I'm happy when people are happy, you know, around me, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm happy when my boss is happy, when my coworkers are happy, mm-hmm. right? But they may be doing something that goes against my morals yeah. or goes against work ethic for that mm-hmm. matter. You know what I mean? I, I really appreciate you. you sharing all of that. Absolutely. So for you though, mm-hmm. I'm going back to you because I'm telling my business. Okay. So- <laughs> Can you can you share, you know, knowing that you were naive, knowing when you're young, you didn't know what you didn't know. So can you share a pivotal moment when you realized that you needed to change your mindset to overcome some of these challenges? When I needed to change my mindset, I think when those mistakes continue mm-hmm. to happen, I always say my missteps in life help yeah. to alter my mindset. Okay. And so I know everyone says that, oh, just think positive and it'll, everything will be okay. It's not that yeah. easy. But yeah. when you continue to have these issues and the mistakes and that you go through, those mistakes are supposed to help you grow. And mm-hmm. I think for me, it was uh, a point in my career where there was a mistake, when there was a situation with students and uh, I was in mm. a particular building and I was making sure that for the staff and the faculty members, we will have equality and excellence in every room in this building. Yeah. Every child will have an opportunity to succeed. Well, I received um, com- uh, confirmation or I received some information from my supervisor. And at that time, he told me, you know what? This is an established campus. And I was the first black principal, female mm-hmm. principal on this campus, you know, what I want you to do is go ahead. You can go in your office and let them run the campus. Mm. How'd that I'm make just you gonna feel? Let you sit with that. Yes, exactly. Yeah, you can I go know. in your office and let them run the campus. That's not yeah. what I was hired for. Because that yeah. takes us back to seen but not heard. Mm-hmm. And Absolutely. how can I be effective in that position? And so yeah. I voiced my concern. Mm-hmm. I'm, I was very professional about it. And I let him know students deserve to be treated fairly because yeah. unfortunately, a lot of people think that the problems that we deal with in the world only exist in our communities and in politics. No, racism, discrimination, stereotypes, the list goes on and on. Sexism, yeah. gender issues, even for mm. faculty and staff members that goes on in our schools. And we yeah. have to be willing to step up to the plate and, and uh, deal with those issues. So eventually, at the end, I had to determine this doesn't serve me right. And yeah. I refuse to compromise. I refuse to sit in my office to make others feel okay because the upper leadership did not want to rock the boat. I'm not mm. here for rocking the boat because I report to a higher power. And if I, your silence means that you agree with it. And so I was determined to speak up. I spoke up. And then I made a decision to take my skills to another district. Mm. All right. So 
since we know the end to that story, yeah. uh, <laughs> let's just apply this question to something else. <laughs> what strategies did and do mm -hmm. you use to stay motivated and focused on your goals despite these type of obstacles? Well, you know, my company's name is Maintain the Flame. And so <laughs> that is very important. And I think that applies to all of us in all areas of life because yeah. we can kind of lose focus or we get lose our energy and our excitement for life. Or sometimes we just have moments where we're down on ourselves. Everything seems to just be going awry. You may be right. having uh, work issues, family issues, marriage issues, and you just have to take time for yourself and you have to maintain that flame. Mm -hmm. So I come up with the word maintain mm -hmm. and I have eight strategies that you can utilize to keep you moving forward. Yes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the first one's going to come from M. It's your mindset. And yeah. so as I shared with you, I believe your mindset is very powerful. Whatever you think, that's what you are. Mm -hmm. And you cannot allow Ooh. other people's uh, opinions of you because everyone's going to have some type of opinion immediately mm -hmm. when they meet you. They may have some concerns or, you know, if this person would do this a little bit better. But for your mindset, you have to have your mindset established. You have to have a positive mindset. But mm -hmm. here's a twist. You need to utilize the mistakes in your life or the missteps that you may encounter to alter your mindset. So mm. instead of looking at the situation in a negative light, let's say that I'm in a relationship and it goes south. So, OK, I need to look at the good times that I had in that relationship. I mm. need to look at the the positive things that I added, be it work or be it positive um, in a uh, personal Excuse life. Me. And mm -hmm. then you take those situations and you flip it. That may have not been meant for me. There is somebody else out there better for me. There may right. be a better job for me. So right. I'm going to take the lessons that I've learned to help me to alter my mindset so I can be my very best when I show up at the next job. Or I can be my very best when I meet the next man or woman that's designed for my life. I love it. So mindset. <clears throat> mindset and mindset twist. Okay, that's let's go. go. Okay, <laughs> the next one is going to be action. You can't sit down all day and just take notes and say, girl, when I'm 56, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. <laughs> <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> or, or when I buy all the equipment I need for my business, then I'll start. My yeah. hairdresser and I were just talking about this yesterday. She's moving her business into her home. And this is something she's always wanted to do. Mm -hmm. But she didn't say, well, I'm going to wait till I get everything set up, which is going to take two or three months in order for me to have customers. Oh, no, yeah. Yahoo, come on in. I'm going to do your hair and you're going to go through my rough patches with me. So you have to take action on your dreams and your goals. So mm. even if you're trying to do a podcast, you may have one or two views or you may have a few uh, listeners or guests on your show. At least you have something. If yeah. you're trying to lose weight and you are, I can't run four or five miles, then instead of doing that, you focus on what you can do. So mm. I'm going to start each day. I'm going to walk down to the stop sign and come back. But at yeah. least I'm making action steps. I'm taking action steps to make my dream a reality. I heard this one quote before you get to the third one. Uh -huh. The best time to get started was 10 years ago. That's right. The next best time to get started is now. Yes, I love it. I love it too. All right, <laughs> let's go three. What we got? Three is going to be intentional. You must mm. be intentional. And so I, with relationships you have, even at work, you have to be intentional when you're establishing those relationships. And so you make an effort. You're coming in. Good morning. How are you? You're trying to find out more about the, that other person. As okay. a supervisor, you have to be the individual that's committed and connected to your team. And so your team cannot just see you sitting on top of a mountain, not getting involved and not being concerned about them, but you're intentional in building those relationships. So mm. I want to know more about you. I want to know more about your family, your likes and dislikes. So that can help me be the best manager that I can be. And I always talk about being intentional when it comes with our relationships as parents. Some of us think I'm, I'm your parent. You do as I say, go in your room. Well, you know, that was back in the day when we were raised. You need to be <laughs> intentional with your children. Make right. time to sit down, find something that they like. 
And so nowadays, you know, it's all a lot about social media. Mm -hmm. Sit down with them as they go through your app, because as you're doing that, they're thinking, oh, you're concerned about me. But you're also gaining some very important information. You're seeing what their interests are. You're seeing who they talk to. And you're able to better help them as they navigate these waters as a, a child, a teen and things of that nature. But be intentional in building relationships. Mm -hmm. All right. I don't have a comment, but I do like the intentional. I do have one, but it's too long of a story. So we want to we want to go ahead. I don't want you to lose your momentum. Okay. <laughs> okay. The next one would be in for nurture. So okay. how many of us take time to nurture ourselves? And I know so many people think when you talk about nurture, a lot of our mindset goes back to women. Oh, go get mm. your hair done. Go get your nails done. But many men need to nurture themselves as well. So yeah. take time to do things that you enjoy. Take that long walk or that jog or sit down and listen to hindsight because you know that so much information that can help you in your journey. But taking that time to nurture yourself, that makes you better for the relationships that you're in. It makes you better for yourself and it prepares you for the future. So nurturing Absolutely. yourself is very important. Okay. And then it is uh, tenacity. You have Ooh. to be tenacious about this life. Now, there is a side of all of us where you are just so jovial and you are so connected and there are so many things that you enjoy. But you kind of put those things on the back burner because you have so many other things that require your attention. Well, you have yeah. to continue to be tenacious. So let's make a, a list. Let's get organized so we can focus on the things that are important and make that at the top of our pri uh, priority list. But continuing to push forward, even when you're knocked down. Even mm -hmm. when you get a no from your boss or you or don't receive that promotion, yeah. you need to be tenacious and continue to push forward each and every day. Okay. Okay. I like it. And then the next A is going to be authentic. We talked about code switching. And so you come out of your car and you're walking in the building and I know I can't vote. And then you get in there, get your team. And you're just a whole nother person and you're just code switching all day, every day. But right. as you're code switching, what are you losing? Yeah. They're gaining because yeah. they're gaining someone that they really don't know as a person. So they're, yeah. they're gaining this employee that's going to say yes and jump every step of the way. But are you really true to who you are? You have to show up authentically in every situation at work. Mm -hmm. And even in our relationships and in our personal lives, because you, we only get one life and one opportunity to do this. Yeah, and when I say maybe. being authentic, I heard a quote on a documentary I watched once. And the young lady said her dad always told her, live full and die empty. Mm. So that means you have to be authentic 100 percent of the time. You have to pursue those things that interest you, because none of us know when that time's going to run out on you. And then you're going to say, no, mm -mm, I'm sorry, Lord. I need about 15 more minutes. I need three more years because yeah. I have this list. No, it doesn't work that way. So yeah. while you have the time, be authentic and true to yourself so you can be happy with the life that you live. Live full and die empty. Yeah, and I like that. Isn't that powerful? Yeah, it's powerful. That's power. That Absolutely. Is. That is. Then the next one is integrity. Now, when we talk about integrity, I tell you, I tell you. Now, come on now. Integrity in our <laughs> world, in this day and age. I know. I guess I know. it's scary because everything goes and people yeah. go along with everything. You you hear individuals on in the workplace. I'm not going to say anything on police force turning a blind eye and anything goes on social media. You have yeah. people 60, 70 years old doing things that 20 year olds are doing. And then you have people that <laughs> refuse to speak up and say, back in the day, I'd be in the grocery store with my mom. And if kids were acting up, she, baby, don't do that. Yeah. No, Who's going to do that now? No one will. Because I have to fit in. And, and I'm not going to talk to nobody else, kid. Right. But that integrity should be a part of who you are. It's your character. It's who you right. are when nobody's around. And even if that means my dad always told me, even if you have to stand alone. You have to have integrity to be mm -hmm, able to do mm -hmm. the things that are required. And so yeah. we see in our society today, people that are supporting different individuals that may have done 
<clears throat> all types of things with hush money and maybe yeah. convicted and things of that nature. And we're still, yes, that's the best. Is it really the best? Are mm -hmm. you just going along to get along or to fit in with your friends and the others in the conversations? Where is the integrity? And why have we lost so much integrity in this world? And so yeah. a lot of integrity, and that's another thing I talk about in my book, My Soul is Not for Sale. With mm -hmm. our integrity, it's very lonely. Because when you begin to stand up and your voice is being heard and the right. power up, may, the powers that be may not like what you're saying, your coworkers that used to go to lunch with you every day and kick it with you and, oh, you're oh, so fun, they yeah. start to disappear. They go. Yeah. Yeah. And so you feel that you're invisible and you're fighting this war in this situation alone. But integrity has a high cost and there are consequences to having integrity. Mm -hmm. But are you willing mm -hmm. to let go of your integrity to fit in here on earth? Are you willing to hold on to your integrity because you know you have a higher calling on your life? Right. And I tell you what, I know we got one more, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it, it's easier to hold on. I mean, it's easier to let go, let go. of the integrity, right? Yeah. It's a lot easier and you want to fit in and you want to be in that circle, right? But, mm -hmm. you know, on the other side of that, you realize that maybe some of these people that I'm trying to be in this circle, this isn't the circle for me. There you go. Right. Mm -hmm. And you start to shine your real true self, right? Yes. And now this other circle presents itself to you that mm -hmm. aligns more with who you are. I also, when you talked about that, how you say I, you have to de decide if this circle or this individual or whatever is good for me. I always look at that because as adults, mm -hmm. we're steady trying to fit in, even as adults. But I always say when we go into our workplace or in our relationships, they're yeah. only just li little kids and big body. That's all mm. we are. We all yeah. are little kids and big body. So that narcissist that was a narcissist when he was younger is still in your workplace or in your relationship or whatever yeah. it is. Or yeah. that controlling person or that bully when you were little. Mm -hmm. They just grow up to be an older version of the bully that you dealt with as a child. So right. you have to hold on to your integrity and be able to stand up to those individuals. And that I brings me to the non-negotiables. And that's the last point. You must come up with your non-negotiables. And I listen to all these podcasts and I see these individuals and they talk about just draw the line in the sand and have your boundaries. Well, it's, mm -hmm. it's difficult. Yeah, it's very it difficult. That's not easy because mm -hmm. when you draw the line in the sand, there are individuals that's going to try you and they're going to make it hard for you to have to keep your stance because they want their way. But whatever is best for them in their life, you have mm -hmm. to let it go and allow them to have that. But you have to have your non-negotiable. This yeah. is something I am not going to compromise. I'm not going to compromise my values. I'm not going to compromise my morals. You know, mm -hmm. they talk about so many people that may sleep yeah. their way up to the top, the top, mm -hmm. or they're mm -hmm. very political. They know how to play politics on their job. They may not know yeah. how to do the job, but they know how to brown those. Yeah. Well. And yeah. so you have to come up with your non-negotiables so you can understand what's going to serve you best in your life in your mm. relationships and on your jobs. Mm. <laughs> so we got mindset, mm -hmm. action, intentional yes nurture tenacity and i'm you know next time i talk to you i'll be able to just look you in the eye that's right and say these things without reading them off okay, the page. okay. <laughs> <laughs> authentic integrity and non-negotiables yes that is i tell you what non-negotiables is amazing because there are some things that you're going to have to negotiate, right? Uh -huh. okay. There are some things that you're going to have to, you're going to have to give a little bit. Yes. Um, if you're mm -hmm. dealing with other people because they have non-negotiable, well, they have negotiables too, yes. right? Um, so it can't be all about you. And in some of that negotiating, you, you may learn, yeah. right? Uh -huh. But in the things that you are absolutely not going to, my mm -hmm. non-negotiables, that is everything. That's it. Because if you don't stand for anything, then you'll fall for everything, right? Exactly. So I think that's something like that. I may yes. have gotten it a little bit wrong, but that's that's the bottom line, right? You'll it fall is. for anything. Uh, are all of these chapters in your new book, or are these just the the actions, or the what? What do you call these eight? What are these eight core? Uh, Those are what are just, these 
strategies to shift your mindset so you can design strategies the to life shift your you mindset. desire. Yes. Okay. And that comes from the business name, Maintain the Flame. Maintain the Flame. And I like that. <laughs> Thank you. I like that. We got a lot out of that question, y'all. So, <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> so, so, what were the key mindset shifts that helped you in your journey? I think the key mindsets was number one, taking time to figure out who Nicole was and who I mm-hmm. am, and mm-hmm. and that's not just going to be. And I need people to understand and be very clear. That's not just a one and done. Mm-mm. because you have to figure Mm-mm. out who you are in different situations for yourself. So I took time. I sat with myself. I reflected on my thoughts. And then I said, this is who I need to be, or this is who I am in this particular situation. Now, mm-hmm. am I the same Nicole that I was five years ago? No, I'm not. I'm continuing mm-hmm. to evolve and I'm continuing to grow. And like you said, I'm open to feedback. I'm open to different relationships because everyone has a perspective. But at the end of the day, I had to figure out my non-negotiables because my character means a lot to me. So I think just going through different situations in life allowed me to shift my mindset and to continue to move forward, knowing that it's not going to be easy. And so it just takes one step at a time, which is actually my journal that I wrote a couple of years ago. See, look, look. I had to, I had to look this way because the monitor is over here. Uh-huh. <laughs> I know that's right. Yeah. Congrats, congrats. I'm always yeah. excited about individuals who really sit in and, and uh, sit down and are disciplined and focused and can, you know, get these ideas out of their out of their heads, right, yeah. and put it on paper so that you can share, you know, with the masses some some lessons that you've learned in life. So that's mm-hmm. awesome. Congrats on that. Yeah. How do you stay accountable to yourself and your goals? Simple answer because you just about answered it. Okay. But that was a follow up question, but you kind of answered it with the last question. But what are some key things that you do to stay accountable to yourself and your goals? Number one, I think it's very good to have accountability partner. And mm-hmm. so having mm. someone that can hold you accountable, somebody that can check in on you. If you say I'm, I'm on a diet and I'm not going to eat any more sugar, I'm done with that, which I've been trying to stop sugar for so long. It's so hard. I tell you. Me and bread. I just I want a hamburger. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. <laughs> but uh, I, you have to have an accountability part. Yeah, that's yeah. huge. And Mm -hmm. outside of your accountability partner, you have to sit down and I'm a big person. I do, I sit down list, I write list out and I set um, goals that I'm going to accomplish at the beginning of every month. And then I Mm -hmm. always, especially at the beginning of every year, uh, my family and I, we sit down and we write down what are your five personal and your religious and your professional goals. And so we write those down together as a family. We've been doing that at very many years, even when my children are little. And my son would be, I want to make three touchdowns. And my daughter, I'm going to do this and track. And my other one, she's a very great writer and she's a teacher. And so Mm. once they share those ideas, we hold each other accountable. So accountability partner, setting monthly goals, even weekly goals, and Mm. then making sure you go back and check. And you may not accomplish that goal. That is okay. We are right. human, but at least remember that second step of maintain. You're taking some type of action. You looked at your notes. I did. I'm looking down <laughs> too. I'm like, what's number two? What's uh-huh. number two? <laughs> <laughs> Would you um, take action towards your goal? Hey, can you share a personal success story where taking action and being accountable made a significant difference in your life journey or your career journey? I will say uh, starting the company, maintain the flame. Mm-hmm. And I think there that that go. was very huge for me because mm-hmm. this has always been my passion. I've always been different. And so at first, of course, growing up young, I thought it was a bad thing because I didn't fit. I dress different. I love to have fun. I'm silly. And uh, um, even my kids, friends used to come over when they were little and say, adults don't act like that. And I said, mm. this adult does because my <laughs> age, I, I'm not going to be, I don't have to behave a certain way. No, you don't. I'm about to be 50. I'm mm-hmm. enjoying my life. Right. And so for me, I started Maintain the Flame many years ago. I lost my sister 
She was 48 mm. at the time. And okay. uh, she was planning for her 50th birthday that she was never able to attend. But this young lady lived life to the fullest and she went through yeah. so much. She was a single mm -hmm. mother, then she got married and she had some issues in her marriage, but she never gave up and she continued to fight. And I think it's a part of her energy that she uh, helped with that idea when her passing and also for me to realize that you only get one shot at this. And so you mm -hmm. must maintain your flame. So I decided I'm going to create a company where I can mm. be the advocate and I can be the cha a champion for the underdog. I've always right. rooted for the underdog because I know against all odds, they're still going to thrive and be successful. So that was a shift for me, knowing that my value and who I am is not going to be determined by my supervisor, by any person I'm in a relationship with or anyone in my family. It's going to be determined by me. I'm going to mm -hmm. maintain my flame and I'm going to continue to inspire and encourage others. I know that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. I know whenever I, I <laughs> whenever I turn on, and this is really simplifying your uh -huh. statement. And and I look and the Patriots are playing, I don't know, the Cleveland don't say Browns. The Cowboys. The uh, Cleveland the Cowboys, that's uh -huh. they're their favorites. So but <laughs> So, and Cleveland is up by two touchdowns uh -huh. and it's like a quarter left. I'm going to stay and I'm going to watch. Me not because I like Cleveland and mm -hmm. I'm a Steelers fan, so I should have said the Steelers. Okay. But not that I like Cleveland, but because I want to see That's right. the underdog mm -hmm. succeed. You know yeah. what I mean? So I could definitely appreciate that. And that, like I said, that's a simple, a simple mm -hmm. um, you know, example of that. But I think a lot of people feel that way in a, in a lot of things, actually. So, mm -hmm. all right. So maintain the flame. So it sounds like you found your, and I keep plugging this because I just all these years, and I've just read um, the uh, the Alchemist. Oh. And I don't know if you read that book. Mm -mm, not yet. But it is really amazing, and it talks okay. about a young a young man or young boy who find, or he's on a journey to find his personal legend, mm -hmm. what he is absolutely meant to do, right? And you're going to have, once you figure out what it is that you want to do, yeah. like maintain the flame, they're going to be, it, what it says in the book, the universe conspires, mm -hmm. right, to make that happen because you're on your personal legend, right? This is what you were meant to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so knowing that you're on that journey and you're there and you're making it happen, that's amazing. So yeah. applaud. Yeah. Now let's get to the book. You're in the process of writing My Soul Is Not For Sale. Yes. Can you tell us a little, more, a little bit more about that project and kind of what inspired you to write this book? Well, My Soul Is Not For Sale, um, and it talks about challenges that we face. And I tried to make sure that I appeal to everyone because I think everyone can use the information that's there. Yeah. Uh, we have times in our relationships, in our workplace, and just in the community that and when we're out and about where mm -hmm. we're called on to conform or to accept the status quo. And with all of the experiences that I've had in the field of education and in my private life and even in my family life, I've looked at the situation and I felt that, you know, they're taking parts of me as mm. I go through these experiences. But mm -hmm. I had to think about my non-negotiables that mm -hmm. a lot of people may say I'm a non-conformist, but I refuse to settle. So my soul yeah. is not for sale. So the lies that are out there, those lies can apply to anyone. You, you know, people tend to judge you by what they hear. So the lies about, oh, this, there's a little black boy coming in the store with a hoodie on. Something's about mm -hmm. to go wrong. That's not necessarily the case. The mm -hmm. labels, even in my school buildings, I've been yeah. where individuals have said, oh, they're passing drugs. Go check on them. Well, it's mm. a group of little black boys, but I just yeah. walked by a group of white boys. And you didn't say anything about them. Right. But why did you ask me to check on the others? Because mm -hmm. they've been labeled. And the limitations on all of our lives that people think you can only do so much. I'm yeah. going to give this to you, but you can go this far but that's not in your control. You don't get to determine how far I can go. So right. I just talk about biases in the building, little kids in big body, uh, being seen but not heard. And one of my favorite chapters is flush. And that goes back to my sister, Felicia. When I would have okay. prob problems, she would say, girl, 
Get a piece of paper, a tissue paper, and write your problems down. And after you write them down, I want you to reflect on them. I want you mm. to think about them. I want you to pray over it. Then you take it over to that, that toilet and you flush it. And mm. so because of her story that she shared with me and her approach, I came up with facing life's unpleasant situations and healing. You have mm. to heal from the trauma and the hard, difficult times that we have and so that we're able to move on and have an amazing life. So my soul is not for sale. We give you key takeaways that you mm -hmm. can apply in your life. We talk about the topics that people don't want to talk about, but we are just trying to get you to look at yourself, look at your life, make changes that you believe are necessary in order for you to design the life you desire. <sighs> Thank you. Thank you. But once again, <laughs> I had a question all oh. teed up. Okay. And you kind of touched on it. So I'm going to go back to this other one. How do you okay. define living an audaciously authentic life? I think that kind of connects with the quote that I shared with you, live full, mm -hmm. die mm -hmm. empty. You're just yep. living life to the fullest. You're enjoying yeah. every moment. Most importantly, you're being present in the moment. Right. So many times I know like me, I, like I told you, I'd write a lot of lists. And when I started out in life, I was like, I'm going to have this much money before I'm this age. I'm going to be in this position before I'm this age. And I had children. And I was like, oh, my goodness, you got to get out of these diapers yeah. by this age. So I yeah. had all these lists, but I wasn't enjoying the moment. So mm. living an audacious, authentic life means you've got to live in the moment. You have to savor and enjoy every moment because that's going to be a culmination of who you become. So bring your authentic self to the table so they mm -hmm. can enjoy. All right. Now, here's the one that you already touched on, but I uh -huh. want to put some space between your last answer and this okay. question. Okay. <clears throat> But it is a little more specific. What are the main takeaways that you hope readers will gain from your book? The main takeaways that I think is important is that, number one, when you enter in situations, it's okay to make mistakes. We're mm. all human. It's okay to voice your opinion. Don't think that because everyone else is ignoring a situation, if it if it's a, the way a student is being treated or if it's a, a boss that you know that is being inappropriate with other uh, yeah. colleagues, it's OK to speak up. So yeah. make sure that you're willing to speak up, make sure that you're willing to take a stand. And mm -hmm. my main message that I want to get to listeners more than anything and to the readers, hold on to your integrity. Mm -hmm. Even though it comes with a cost and a consequence, hold on to your integrity because it says a lot about who you are and you will feel better about yourself in the end. Because so many of us, we look at situations and we may say that has nothing to do with me, but yeah. a situation similar may be coming your way and you would want someone to stand up for you and have integrity in the way they handle you. So your I integrity so. is very important. I know you haven't finished. Okay. But how has writing this book impacted your own personal and professional journey? I think it's helped me a lot because, you know, when you journal and mm -hmm. I try to get up in the morning and have my private quiet time with God and journal, I think mm. you're like pouring out your soul. You're yeah. dealing with the issues that you've once encountered and you're highlighting those issues so you can remember them as you move along. You don't forget the lessons you learn. You yeah. bring them with you so you can be a better person. So I think being able to release a lot of the challenges and situations that I face helped me to become a better version of Nicole so that yeah. I can maintain my flame. You know, you just said lessons learned. And that's mm -hmm. something that the military used a lot. We would do missions mm -hmm. and then we would debrief at the end and then we'd have a section on lessons learned. So things we did really well. Yeah. things we could have done better and things we need to scrap. Right. Yeah. And just taking the time out, you just talked about lessons learned. That's hindsight, yeah. right? You take those lessons learned and you apply those to choices in the future, right? Mm -hmm. We want to make the right choice and it may be uncomfortable, but it is the right choice. Right. <clears throat> and you get those through experiences. You get those through life lessons. You get those through, um, education and, and all these different things. Mm -hmm. And we will get that through reading your book. Yes. Right. <laughs> so, you know, it just gives you fun learning it and then it empowers you. Right. 
to do the right thing, right? Because you got to live with yourself. It's your life. That's right. That's right. You know? Um, so anyway, I'm off my soapbox. So I've asked a few questions and thank you so much for yeah. the acronyms. The, uh, you know, they were, they were really good, but I am going to ask you one thing before I, before I say this. Okay. Flush. What was flush again? Facing life. Unpleasant situations and heal. That's everything. I just interviewed uh, another guest and he was talking about one of the, one of the five components of love is, um, <laughs> why'd I tee myself up and now I can't remember it is, is basically healing. Mm -hmm. Right. And it wasn't healing, but that's the same concept. It's yeah. healing, right? You're going to go through some unpleasant things, right? And some of that trauma that you receive from that unpleasant situation is It can affect you. Yeah. It can keep you stuck, right? It can hinder some of the love that you're going to give to someone else or to yourself. Yeah. Um, so that, that healing, at the end is that key component that you really need to not forget when you're going through these unpleasant situations. You can come to terms with it. You can do all these other things, but if you don't heal from it, uh, yeah, it's just going to keep you stuck. So I love it. I'm looking for, really looking forward to your book. So you got to make sure you email me I will. and say, Hey Lee, uh, <laughs> my book is out here. You know, check mm -hmm. it out. You can get it here. Okay. So I've asked you a few questions and right now I just wanted to give you an opportunity to maybe tell us something that I didn't ask that maybe you wanted to talk about or something that you think would resonate really nicely with the audience, but just take a few moments to just tell me anything you want to tell me. <laughs> well, I always like to ask people, what is your song of the day? Music does everything. It helps to eliminate or give us a moment, a break from our problems. If you can yeah. have a song right now for how you're truly feeling, what is your song of the day? Are you asking me? I am. <laughs> I'm horrible with song names, but the <laughs> thing, because I feel good right now and I do like rap, um, I would say today is a good day by Ice Cube. Mm. That's the one that just came came to me. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll stay with that one. Today is a good day. Okay. Well, my song is going to be because I'm happy, <laughs> <laughs> and that's by Pharrell, right? Yeah, think, yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. See, that would be my song for the day. I know that's yes. right. So at least we, we, we're early in the morning. Well, you're in Texas, so you got a few hours ahead of yes. me, but uh -huh. at, at least we're still smiling. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that, that's it. I, I like to always break the ice with that question because sometimes we can get caught up in life and the situations we're dealing with and music yeah. does wonders. So just take a moment, pop in one of your, I was about to say cassette tapes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> But what is it now? Just, I guess, tunes, iTunes, It's just and all streaming. Yeah, Stream streaming yes. or, yeah. <laughs> yes. Maybe you still got an iTunes. Uh-huh. Well, my, my daughter, she has, is it Spotify? Wherever it is where I know you can save music, uh, you can buy it and all that mm -hmm. stuff. So, anywho, yeah, I don't know. So, we'll say albums and cassette tapes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm more comfortable there. Yeah, me too. <laughs> So where can we find out, where can the listeners find out a little bit more about you and, and maybe reach out to you or learn more about your projects that are going on? Well, they can uh, go to my website. It's www.maintaintheflame, all one word, dot mm -hmm. net. And on okay. there, it'll give you all the information about me, where you can book me as a speaker, as a trainer for a workshop. If you want some coaching, whatever it is that you're interested in, I'm just wanting to focus on helping others have the life that they desire. And I'm always rooting and advocating for the underdog. I know that's right. I love your website. Are you on Instagram or any kind of social media? Yes. The only in media is uh, Instagram and it's maintain the flame. Okay. Maintain the flame. Yeah. yeah I had to check that out. Cause I really love your, your uh, website. I got to get some photos of me talking to people yeah. and just maybe a video or something like that. Every time I'm in front of people, I feel awkward. Like yeah. I need to get this video <laughs> so that I can promote, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. I don't, I don't know. So anyway, uh, that's, we, we can talk about strategies on that offline. Okay. But, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, a thank you, Dr. Nicole D. Bradford. What does D stand for? Daniels, my maiden name. I have to hold on. I, I brought my parents here to live with me in 2019. I lost my dad in 2021 mm, and my mom okay. in 2022. So I have to hold on to that Daniels. That's a part of my core and that's who I, I love am. it. I love it. 
But thank you, thank uh, you, Nicole, for sharing your incredible journey and valuable insights with us today. Your story of overcoming obstacles and living authentically is truly inspiring. And to the listeners, thank you for tuning in to this episode of Hindsight, the podcast. We hope Dr. Bradford's experiences and advice help you in your own journey to break free from limitations and live a life true to yourself. Look, remember to stay tuned for more episodes where we explore life choices and their impacts on our personal and professional lives. See you next time. Thanks, Nicole. Thank you. <laughs> hey, thanks for joining me here on Hindsight, the podcast. I'm your host, Lee Jones. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know I did. And while I have you here, why don't you take your mouse and go over and click on that subscribe button? No, no, not right there. Over to the right. T no, no, down, down, right, right there. Boom. Thank you. Now, thank you for subscribing to Hindsight the Podcast. I'm your host, Lee Jones. <laughs>